There's a big, God, it's huge. There's a big bird about to attack us. Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups. And I'm here with my daughter Chanel and her fiance, Jake in the back, and a pregnant dog that we're taking to Dr. Marilyn Wagamoth over at, uh, let's see, what is it called? Heartland, Medi oh, oh. Heartland Animal Hospital. In Weatherford, Oklahoma. She's great. Love she's her. Wonderful. She's wonderful. She's a Frenchie vet. She is a Frenchie vet. She's got Frenchies. She's yep. actually used some of our studs. And uh, she's uh, making herself available with her crew at 10.30 uh, on a Sunday morning. How good a vet is that? The best. So Chanel, tell us what's going on here. What day are we at with this girl? This is... So yesterday was her first due date, and today is her second due date because reading off of her what AI dates, it was May 10th, May 11th, May 12th. So what I do in my head is if you tell me it's May 10th, I roll forward two months to the same date, which would be July 10th. That was yesterday. That would be her first due date. Okay, keep going. Yep. So what was the temperature yesterday? Uh, her temperature yesterday was 99.9. .9. But we had two thermometers. But we had two thermometers. So we were, once we found out that there was a difference between the thermometers, one was reading at least 0.9 higher than the other one. So we started taking temperature twice, poor Nova, every time we check our temperature, just to keep a reading. So my thermometer at home was reading 100 for several days. So whenever we, you know, took her to like mom and James's house, we were just curious and checked it with their thermometer and it said 98. We were like, oh no. So we went back, got ready to go and have been taking her temperature of both thermometers, knowing the difference of the, of the temperatures. And today, actually, both are reading 100. So. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna say something about that. Well, actually, there's a one degree difference still, isn't it? Because we put. Yes, it's still it, a one degree difference, but they're both over yeah. 100.0. So, so the, the thing here is that I think that the first thermometer that you used is a, a bogus thermometer. It's a VIX brand. Right, and I mean, well, I, yeah, well, it's not from the puppy kit. No, the one from the puppy kit, well, I think is reading right. But, but the point here is, look, you you could get into trouble with this because we think she wasn't ready. In fact, this girl is ready. Yep. How do I know she's ready? Yesterday, her progesterone was seven. Well, we first, she has stopped eating. Yes. And I will say this. I stayed up with her all night long, and you know what I did? I went back through the YouTube channel, found James talking about when to know whenever your dog's about to go into labor, and I watched that at 4.30 this morning. She's a clever girl. It's there. It's it's free information. That's right. It is. <laughs> so I didn't have to call them at 4.30 in the morning. I just took note of all her signs and took note of what he said and what's possible, how she can have all the signs or one of the, one of the five signs, and it all was on point. So, so, so my experience with this is a dog that... His temperature is less than 99, which I think this dog was. Uh, puppies within 24 hours. A dog that's not eating any food. Nope. No food. Puppies within 24 hours. Yep. A dog that is uh, um, nesting, which she'd been doing. Yep. She was heavily nesting at 4.30 this morning. Which is typically puppies within 12 hours. A dog that is panting and shivering. She started panting on our way this morning. So about, uh, you know, 8 o'clock this morning, she started panting. But last night, about 4.30, heavily, heavily nesting. And then about midnight last night, she started shivering. So I would think that if we left this dog to her own devices and we didn't do anything, she'd have puppies herself, naturally, in the next few hours. Yep. Which, of course, we're not doing that. Nope. I mean, we don't recommend anybody. That, I mean, of course, if you've got a Labrador Retriever or something like that, completely different. They're both Frenchies. You know, we always do C-sections. Um, but... I want to get back to the thermometer for a moment. So how do you know that the thermometer is working right? Well, the answer is, is that you can use it on yourself. So clean it well, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it may taste like shit I up, use, what, you know what I mean? I use plastic sheets on mine to make sure okay. I'm being extra. Okay. But just stick it in your mouth. If you know what, you, man, I know what my temperature is on a regular basis. Mine's a little bit low. My temperature is like normally something around, you know, 97.9. If it read that, I'd know that which thermometer was the good one. Of course, the other solution is just to get, with two thermometers with different readings, you don't know which is the right one. You've got to calibrate it. So the next thing to do is get another thermometer and find out what's going on. But I think that that really could have been a hiccup for somebody is just simply relying on one thing, a thermometer. And that's the point about this is, is that it's the only single thing that is completely reliable is a uh, progesterone test, yes. which we did, and we're, Tammy's gonna re give us that result here in about 10 minutes and call us up. Yep, okay. and according to that video, there were five signs, and while they're all happening in their own time, it is very right. It doesn't have to be all five, it right. could be, and they were happening at a scattered time, and 
my biggest sign was, from what I know, from my experience with living with my parents, um, is the panting. And my goal was to leave as soon as she started panting, but instead, because the thermometers were not being, you know, completely reliable, or they were being reliable, but it just made you question it, so we hit the road. Sorry about that. Moving things around here. Yeah. It just gets... There we go. Stay here. Well, here's the next thing. You want, you do not want to be, look, we thought we might have puppies in the middle of the night. We didn't think so. We thought we'd... Yesterday, he thought it would be Monday. Yeah, well, I thought it might but be Thursday. we're going off of the past, past history with Kiki. Kiki was a 16, and then within 24 hours, she was a... Three, let's do one, six. Yeah. Yep, right. And yesterday, Nova's progesterone test was 7.5. Yes. And today, in less than 24 hours later, here we'll we see. are. We'll see, we'll see, yeah. So, the thing I was going to say was, we... Visited Dr. Wogamoth yesterday with some puppies that were having um, examinations done. Health checks. Health checks. And so we said, hey, look, we're going to have puppies in the next 24, 48 hours. Are you available? So we'd already got that. The, the point well, was. Actually, a week prior yeah. to her day, I called. And, you know, with summertime, if your vet is a traveler, get in there as soon as you have an idea when your first due date's going to be. Start making your phone calls. Yes. So you don't want to be in a situation where it's four o'clock in the morning, you're trying to get hold of a vet that we will talk to. Oh, I can right? imagine. I could yeah. not imagine. Yeah, you'd be a, yeah, on exactly. top of everything else that's going on. Yeah, exactly. Well, you may be forced to have puppies, uh, you know, yourself naturally at home with all kinds of uh, risks that are associated with that. So the point here is, is good planning, which is what we're hopefully doing right here. And that's one of the points we want to get across is, is good planning. So to the boot of good planning, hey Jake, you got that uh, little, that uh, puppy care kit in the back there? Yeah. Grab that out. So here's the next thing, is we are traveling with our emergency kit. And and so Jake's gonna show us the various things. This is Jake in the background. Hey, say hi, Jake. Hi. Hi, Jake. We're in my car, we're not my mom's super giant spaceship car. So. Talking about spaceships, and he's gonna go in space later, too. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, I'm going to stop a second. Here's Tammy calling. We'll get right back to it. All right, so um, what have we got in our emergency kit, Jake? Show us what we've got. So, we've got trash bags. That's my percussion. My, my soul bikes. Latex gloves. Scissors. Floss. Yep, so, the scissors and the floss are going to be if we have puppies in the car that we can tie off their umbilical cords and then snip with the scissors, the umbilical cord and separate from the center. The trash bag is because we're going to make a huge mess. And the towels and the wipes are so we can cut that mess up so Chanel's car value doesn't drop by $10,000. <laughs> um, obviously got a syringe. Just, we've got the uh, suckers, which they're wrapped up. You won't be able to show them the, the nose, the baby, what's yeah. it called? It's the aspirators. Well. Yep. Well, that's interesting because guess what I've got in my pocket? Aspiration. Well, the last yeah. time we went in there, they didn't have enough. That's right. They didn't. They, they had also one. Didn't know. They, they had one aspiration bulb. So I thought to myself, right I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to put an aspiration bulb in my pocket. Chanel brought one too. So we've got actually six in the car. Right there now. you go. <laughs> so this is so that you can put them in their nose and they go, put them in their mouth and they go. Yep. Because. Think about this, when puppies are in mum, they're in an amniotic sac, surrounded by amniotic fluid. And so they're not breathing that, they're getting all their oxygenation through the umbilical cord and mother's blood supply. Yeah. But the moment you sever that and they're out in the open, they've got to do this transition very quickly in a matter of a few minutes. Or less. Yeah, to, to breathing. And uh, when their lungs are full of fluid, of course they can't breathe. Yeah. And, and but that's one of the things we're going to talk a little bit at the end of this about what happens if you get puppies too early. But anyway, this is the thing, along, along with shaking them, uh, bouncing a puppy with its head facing down. Yeah, you're just letting gravity, you know, in the vacuum internally, kind of pull that up. Not, not like an actual vacuum, but like, you know. Yeah, so you're bouncing the baby. Um, kind of like this, with his head went down. You've got to protect his head so you don't, you know, you don't want don't, to yo-yo his don't, head. Yeah. Don't drop the puppy and make me slippery, of course. Secure, that... like this. Yep. Maybe secure it. Yep. Like it's in a, like yep. it's in a thing. Yep. And wrapped up in a towel because you don't want to get cold because the moment they come out, they have a mum's heat. And you want to hang on to it. Usually the clamps are there, making sure the umbilical cord's there. So yep. right when they come out, you get handed a puppy, clamps on its umbilical cord, and you got to hang on that umbilical cord and the neck, secure the neck, and do it in a way that you're not tearing the I think what we'll cord. do today is we'll do a video on that as they're born. Cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we have. We'll do that. We're going to do a video for you. It specifically shows how you how you uh, get the fluid out of puppies. 
Okay, what else do we have? Is that is that it for our list? Oh, we got Vaseline. So the, so the Vaseline, it's a super, look, if she goes into labor, or if you've got a dog that you're gonna have a natural birth, the very first thing to do is get a good dollop of Vaseline and basically stick it up in the vaginal canal because it helps lubricate everything up. Huge difference yes. between a puppy that gets stuck and a puppy that can be delivered naturally. Well, also, you're, you're reducing the chances of tearing and infection. Absolutely. So Vaseline, very, very important. Probably the most important thing in the list. The list almost, yeah, what else? Uh, it looks like, I'm guessing this is goat's milk. Yeah, that's just my... <laughs> yeah, we've got some goat's milk and, and a feeding bottle and a feeding tube, but we're not probably yeah. using that I'm right now. I'm a DSA prepper, so I'm literally thinking, okay, what is the worst, very worst case scenario? Like there's a nuclear strike on the way there and you couldn't I'm get I'm ready home. for a nuclear strike, honestly. Yeah. I'm and you'd be able to save your sleep. babies and you'd be able to continue the world of Frenchies. <laughs> would be, would we be continue gonna... on from, just from, from your line of Frenchies. We're going to have a herd of Frenchies in our bunker. Exactly. You wouldn't be eating anything, would you? No. Okay, well, I was checking that thing. What else we got back there, Jay? Uh, we got nail clippers, and that looks like it. Okay. And it's also all enclosed in the incubator. Yep. Yeah, okay, so that's another thing. It's just the, you the know, incubator. The incubator. So a traveling incubator that you can get from Vibrator Supply that plugs into your car cigarette lighter so that you can get it. So We've got it, the wall charger for a wall outlet, and we also have the car charger in case. So so we, we will use it in the car on the way home. Right, and we will when we when we get into the vet's office, that thing's going to be plugged in and warmed up, get it up to 104 degrees, when 12 baby, degrees. When a baby gets all its fluid out and it's breathing on its own, takes its first breath, looks pretty strong, you put it in the incubator and you move on to the next baby because more likely you're going to be doing the you know uh, what's Henry Ford's thing. Uh, yeah, we might. Like. Like. <laughs> right. Well, the last time we had, well, you and I did this, Chanel, we had uh, literally 10 puppies from Lola, didn't we? Yep. That was all hands on deck. Yep. I mean, there was really not almost enough people. I think there was uh, one, well, we two, cycling four in. people there, wasn't there? Yep, there was four and people. And the puppies were coming faster than we could have. Not enough aspirator things. Yeah, not aspirator. enough of these things. And I mean, it takes up to, you know, eight, ten minutes sometimes on a puppy to get a puppy going. It can be and quite that's, scary. That's too long, I think. I mean, you're trying to get them to get oxygen and trying to get them because once they get that they've got a better chance of being stronger whenever they take off on their own and you know yeah well i mean it's yeah you say that's too long i mean you just got to keep on going until they take oh, yeah, and sometimes yeah. they scare the crap i'm not saying too long like give up like you you work until that puppy's yeah yeah you don't want a situation where there's a puppy that's laying on the table waiting for its turn because you're yeah. working on the puppies that, that's yeah. why that's what you meant was doing yes yeah. exactly Okay, so um, talking about this having puppies early, so you wouldn't think that, I'm, that the, the, you know, if you took puppies a couple of days early that this would be a critical situation, but it doesn't sound like, now what's the difference between a puppy that's 60, 59 days versus 61 days? 61 days from ovulate, from uh, AI is normal, which would be 63 days from ovulation. Why would you think it would make a difference? Well, the answer is a thing called surfactant, which is a chemical that the puppies produce that is triggered by progesterone levels, presumably, that lets them do the transition from being in the mother's belly with amniotic fluid in their lungs to being out in the air. And that surfactant is some kind of a chemical that's to do with getting rid of um, the amniotic fluid in their lungs. If you do this early, what happens is, first thing is you see puppies that look like little birds with slick faces and bulging eyes. Um, that's a sign that you took puppies early and then what? They didn't bake long enough. They didn't bake long enough. It's a bad day. Because you'll very likely lose some of all those puppies. You're taking its resources away if you take it out too early. Because yeah. it needs every, every last... You know, it's very day. tentative. The whole thing's very tentative. It's kind of, you know, it's a very fragile part of the whole living, giving birth cycle. Mm -hmm. Just getting the time. It's all there for a reason. Yep. So, um, so to... to to that end, I see a lot of my customers who have bred to our dogs and we get involved in the uh, C-section timing, where the dog who did the AI would make the statement they're going to schedule the C-section just based simply off when they did the AI. And, and although that might be a tentative date, that's all it is in my book, it's certainly not the day that it's quite likely could be shifted a day or two either direction. And uh, you've got to pay attention to it. Every dog is different, every timeline is different, and you need to go off your dog's timeline. Yep, you've got to let the dog that you know. That dog doesn't care what the vet said. That's right. <laughs> that, what do you do, Chanel, if the vet says, oh, well, I'm going on vacation, I'll be in Vegas that weekend? You call your backup vet. You call a backup vet. You that's have right. two, at least two backup vets. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So, to have a relationship with different vets is a good idea. We have a relationship with, let's see, one, two, three, four, about five vets 
Uh, we've got a couple of vets that we do, we use a lot. We've got five vets that we know personally. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, especially when it's school holidays, that, you know, some vet, and it's a Memorial Day weekend or whatever, where you may have a hard time getting into a vet. So, you know, be, a, be, be proactive about this, have something set up ahead of time, because if you don't, you're right as well. And just, this is the end of this video, but please don't just summarily decide you're going to schedule a C-section based purely on the day that you did the AI, that is a recipe potential disaster. I would guess 10% of puppies' Frenchies are taken early with bad consequences. Okay, yep. Okay, what else, Chanel? Uh, Fingers crossed? Fingers crossed. How many puppies? I think four. I really think four. But we've always been surprised. That's right. I think four as well. What we're hoping for is this, healthy puppies. Yes. That's what we want. Yes. We'll, we'll take what we get. We just want healthy puppies with a good outcome. Could you say the progesterone? Yeah, actually her progesterone level is actually still a little bit above three, but we're going to go ahead and do this and that. So I don't like to give out that advice because I tell people three or less, but, but I've got all the other signs that let me believe that. And the thing about progesterone is it does drop. It can, it's very variable in the way that it drops. Um, but we've got a girl here that's got all the signs. That she, all the signs. She's got all the signs. She's not eating food. She's had a temperature drop below 99. She's nesting. She's panting. We are the one day after her first AI, and we've got a progesterone level that's close. Again, this is all from doing your due diligence on understanding what's going on, not just saying, oh, well, the progesterone says five. I'm not going to take her in. I'm not going to call my vet. Well, she's showing signs. And I did, a, I did a dilation check too. I put a glove on, I saw how open her cervix is, it's nice and open and very, yeah, very... she lost her mucus plug yesterday. She lost her mucus plug. Which, by the way, when we're talking about that, is, is that the cervix has some mucus that forms on the front of it to stop bacteria getting in. And when she starts to dilate, that drops out. But that can dry, that's not a very good indicator of anything, because it can happen... That's what made you say Monday. Yeah, it can happen two weeks beforehand, and it can happen not see it at all, so I, I don't... All I can tell you is if I see a mucus plug, I'm pretty sure a dog's pregnant. That's about it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So thanks for watching this. We've got 10 minutes. Left. There's plenty of wasting, plenty of your time on this one. Say goodbye, Chanel. Bye. Jake, you got to say goodbye. See ya. Bye, everybody.